I always love some arts and crafts, and especially if they're Harry Potter related. So today I'm going to be showing you a close look at this Harry Potter origami book. Hello lovelies, my name is Mamta, and welcome to my channel Geek Glitz, in which I talk about all things geek and all things glitz. I make all sorts of videos, especially Harry Potter ones, so feel free to browse through my channel to check out some of my past videos for more magical unboxings, hauls, and fun, and make sure to click on that subscribe button if you like what you see. So before I show you this book, I would like to announce the giveaway winner for my 1000 subscriber giveaway. And the question that I had asked on my 1000 subscriber video was, who is your favorite character and why? And the winning answer came from the Hogsmeade Reader. Congratulations! Her answer was, my favorite character would be Sirius Black. He has injured so much and yet he did not let his struggles make him a bad person. I love how much he looked after Harry for as much as he could and I think a part of me really broke when he died. Hashtag RIP Sirius. You'll always be my favorite marauder. So that was a great response. Congratulations, the Hogsmeade reader. To claim your awesome Harry Potter five-star exclusive prize, check my reply to your comment for further instructions on how to get in touch. So today, I'd like to talk about this Harry Potter origami book, which was recently released, and it features 15 foldable crafts. And it's by Scholastic. And you can see a couple of crafts over here. We've got an owl, a howler, parts of Hogwarts, the golden snitch. So it looks awesome. So let's just check out the back of the book. So it says, ever wanted to fold your own howler or play a desktop game of Quidditch? So basically, this would be the book for that. It's 112 pages. It's an origami guidebook. It's got step-by-step -step instructions with 15 unique origami pieces. It includes objects, characters, creatures, and settings straight from Harry Potter. And this includes illustrated paper with custom designs for each craft, step-by-step -step instructions, like I said, and photography of the real finished origami for helpful reference. Now, that's actually a good thing because you kind of want to know what your finished product is gonna look like so that's really useful to know so this sounds really exciting and these are the prices it's 12.99 us dollars 16.99 canadian dollars and 8.99 pounds so i bought this book on amazon and i'm gonna link to it below in the description if in case you guys wanted to check it out too so now i'm gonna get started and show you guys the inside of this book i'm gonna do a flip through and we're gonna see all the different pages and then at the end i'm gonna actually do a couple of the projects in here too so you guys can see what the finished products look like so let's take a look the inside is pretty simple. It's got the title page. It says Harry Potter Origami Wizarding World Warner Brother logo over there. And then the next page is a table of contents, I want to say. So it seems like it's got all the different items, like all the different projects that you can make inside this book. And there's a section called Inside the Magic, which we'll take a look at soon. And then there are lightning bolts next to each item and that's supposed to indicate the level of difficulty so the more lightning bolts the more difficult and that's really good that they've kind of ordered it from least difficult to most difficult so you can kind of work your way through the book and to get an idea of the different projects and to get a feel of origami as you work your way through it let's go ahead and check out the inside the magic section so it seems to be a couple of pages just describing the type of folds. So the first thing it says is actually, origami is the Japanese art of folding paper into animals, objects, castles, and more. And here they've got a tip that says, we recommend completing these pieces in order of the book. It says that here are some close looks at basic folds and structures that you will master over the course of this book. So you kind of have to work your way through these if you've never done origami before so that you can kind of get a feel of it before you tackle some of the larger projects. So there are creases which seem to be like bends in the paper and then they describe the type of folds. So there's a valley fold which kind of looks like a V and then the colored part faces down and then there's a mountain fold which has, it looks like a mountain, and the top part has the colored area while the bottom would be the bottom of the paper. And then there's a squash fold, which seems like you do a couple of bends and uh, folds and then you kind of squash an area. So, okay, so I'll be honest, my 
like experience with origami is not that much i think the extent of it is just being able to make one of those fortune teller things you know the kinds where you go pick a choice you know okay i'm just doing it with my hands not with the paper but i hope you guys know what i mean just one of those fortune teller things that is my knowledge but i thought this would be interesting because it's harry potter and crafts which i love so anyway let's take a look at the next page now there are some more folds here they've got an inside reverse fold and this one looks a bit complicated seems like you bend it one way then you bend it the other and then it says an outside reverse fold so it says it's similar to the inside reverse folds and then you can use this kind of fold to make shapes of heads and like the head of the hippogriff and tails okay this one looks a little bit more tougher but i think maybe with practice i'll be able to do it and then there is a rabbit ear fold and this one's really cute it's kind of got like a, a tuft of like a tuft flap a flap tuft i think that's what i would call it so yeah that's pretty cute so next we have the bases and there appears to be three type of bases and the bases are basically the starting points of most of the projects that's what it's saying so there is a kite base a square base a bird base and petal fold so they look pretty interesting and the thing is i actually don't know how to do any of these so what i'm actually going to have to do is work through these like beginning pages these beginning instructions the inside the magic part try out a couple of the folds the bases get a feel for it before i tackle the rest of the projects because i'll only have one page for the project and i don't want to be ending up making wrong creases or wrong folds and then like ruining the paper so i better practice with these first but before i do that i'm still gonna go ahead and show you guys the rest of the book so the next page is the sorting hat so this is our first project and it says it's one part and i'm guessing that means that there's only one part to it you're working with one piece of paper the difficulty is level one and this is what the finished product looks like so you can kind of see a couple of the creases in the paper and it shows you a bit of the folds and how it will look and that's actually a really good reference so it's good to know that this is what we're aiming to create once i complete the project and then here are the steps on how to make it and one of the first thing it says is to you can find this uh, okay start with a kite base and you can find this information in the introduction page on page eight so you do have to know the previous pages in order to work through this project even the first level one project because you start with the kite base so this one actually doesn't seem that difficult and the good thing about this project is that it's only 10 steps so this might be a contender for one of the projects that i will do for this video so next up we have the cauldron and this is also one part and it's got a difficulty level of one lightning bolt and i'm really digging the look of this cauldron so it's like black and then on the inside it's got a green part that's supposed to represent the potion and they, here are the steps there seems to be 13 steps oh wait there's actually more there's an arrow here but um before i move on i do want to point out that they've got like movie stills here did they have that before as well let me just check yeah they had a movie still here oh like a sorting hat kind of image okay so this is hermione and she's like brewing a potion which is perfect for talking about the cauldron so let's move on and check out the next page and okay so there are 21 steps here we've got harry brewing a potion too i do really like how they've got the movie pictures to accompany these projects kind of makes it feel more magical and then we've got the howler here so it says it's one part but there's with two pieces and you need scissors and a stapler and the difficulty level is still one now this one is actually looks really exciting i like the way it turns out too and it seems like it's stapled like the white part would be stapled to the red part and technically once you make this once you know how to make this you can make any type of howler or any type of note and you can write anything you want on the inside so that's kind of great so let's take a look at the project so it says how to make a howler and there's like a red paper and which has got a white part too it seems like it all starts with the square slips and i'm guessing that these papers are going to be at the end of the book after all the project instructions so we'll take a look at those later and 
anyways here are all the steps you can see that the scissors need to be used it does look a bit complex like with some of the folds and everything so i'm gonna have to really concentrate when i do get down to making this and okay i love that they've got a picture of ron with the howler over here that's pretty great and okay it's not done there's more instructions here see there's a little arrow on the bottom right so we've got 34 steps for the howler it says over here that you can draw some scribbles in and fold the paper up okay so that means the paper that we're gonna get in this book i'm guessing later does not have ron's holler note on it so you'd have to write in if you want to use ron holler's note or any other note and then there is a bonus in here as well because it says make another howler out of the purple textured paper in the back of this book okay so they are in the back of the book so that's really great we're gonna get to make two howlers with this craft book and then here is a cat cat origami that's kind of cute too i like how it looks so it says one part the difficulty level is one so anyway here are the steps to make the cat there are 20 steps here i think it doesn't look that difficult but i'm not sure and look here we've got mrs norris that's mr filch opening is it mr filch no it's just filch right okay so that's mr filch no why am i doing that okay so that's filch holding mrs norris that's what we've got in that image right there I'm not gonna call him Mr. Filch, nope. And then we've got an owl. How can you have an origami book without an owl craft, especially if it's a Harry Potter origami book? So this makes a lot of sense. And this is also one part, the difficulty level is two. I wonder if we're gonna get multiple owls since they've got two pictures over here. And here are the steps. Okay, there's like little folds here, folds there. Well, duh, they're all kind of folds. This is an origami book, but <laughs> anyway. Here's Harry with Hedwig, and there's more folds. And it does kind of guide you. Like, I just want to point out here, like it says, fold this edge, like A edge onto B edge and stuff like that. So it is kind of detailed. So hopefully it's not that difficult to follow, but we'll see later. And yeah, it does say there's a bonus. You can make a great horned owl out of the brown textured paper. So there are two owls you can make from this book. And then the next page, we've got the golden snitch and there's two parts and you need tape for this. And it does make sense that this would require two parts because I'm guessing you need it for the gold part over here for the snitch ball part and then like the white part for the wings. So this is a difficulty level of two and here we've got the steps. So it says, yes, part one, the body and it shows you how to make the body and you have to use tape and here is part two which is the wings so you can just follow the steps and you've got a complete golden snitch and again you've got to use tape the wing to the inside pocket of the snitch i guess so yeah the tape's going to be really useful i guess for some of these projects and next up we've got a dragon and there seems to be three over here and this is a difficulty level of three and yeah for this project you need scissors it's one part and steps again here they are how to make a dragon yeah that is it it's quite a long one it's got 25 steps and then next we've got the fire bolt broomstick and this is a difficulty level of three it's got one part and i like this a lot like the way it's turned out it's kind of cool it's kind of boxy at the bottom but i guess that's kind of the way you'd have to make the paper fold so here it is here we go and then it says like you have to fold it into a 3D shape. So there's going to be a lot of that to kind of create that effect. So that looks awesome. And oh, look, here's the whole crew with Harry and his firebolt from Prisoner of Azkaban. And then next, we've got the chocolate frog end box. And this is three parts. Now, okay, that kind of makes sense because you probably need something for the lid, something for the bottom, and something for the frog itself. The difficulty level is three. So yeah, here it is. Part one is the chocolate frog. So this is the frog once you have made it and then there's a part two and three with the box lid and base and that seems to be pretty simple it's just like a bunch of creases that you kind of fold together and then that's 11 steps and then you're done and next up we've got the unicorn which is in like a plain white unicorn it's got a difficulty level of three it's one part and you need scissors so here are the steps it's got 23 steps and oh, I love the tail, like the little curve at the tail. So that's gonna be interesting to do. And then we've got Draco here. And then next up, we've got a hippogriff, yes. 
So this is one part. It's a difficulty level of four. So we're getting harder here. So it says how to make a hippogriff. And there are multiple steps again. All kinds of folds and creases. And there are 16 steps. And then we've got Fox the Phoenix. Okay, so I'm getting excited with each project in this book. Just seeing the way that they've got everything laid out and the steps that they have for it. It's just very detailed. And it's going to be fun to work through. So Fox the Phoenix is one part. He's got scissors. The difficulty level is four. Oh, I love the color on this. I think Fox is going to end up looking stunning. And these folds look actually pretty complicated too. It's already more than 26 steps and there's an arrow. So that's 41 steps. But would you take a look at the tail part? That is amazing. The way it kind of folds out. It seems like there's a couple of pleats, I want to say. I'm just kind of going on that because I'm not really reading these in detail right now. But it does look kind of like pleats because you kind of have to fold sections of it. So that's interesting. And next up, we've got Fluffy, the three-headed dog. Are there three heads there? It's a bit difficult to see. There's one. There's two. Where's the third? Am I just not seeing it? Maybe it is one, two, three, and I'm just like not able to see that right now. So anyway, there is tape and scissors required for this. This is a difficulty level of five. So this, this is a difficult project, a very difficult project. So here it is, how to make fluffy. And there's several parts, okay? So you got part one is the heads. So this is where you do the heads. And then part two is of the body. And this is how you'd make that. I think the body looks easier. Okay, I just say the body looks easier, but it's got so many steps too. And then you've got to kind of connect the two parts together with the tape. And that's 22 steps here and 18 steps there. So that's about 40 steps. That's a difficult project. And next up, we've got a stag Patronus. So this is cool. It's got tape and scissors again, difficulty level of five. And then here are the steps. It's got 50 steps. I'm just like so interested in seeing like how many steps there are to each of these projects. And it seems like the more difficult it is, the more steps there are, which does make sense. So anyway, this will be a fun one to work up to. And then finally, we've got the Hogwarts project. I'm pretty sure this is the last one. And this is actually the one I'm most excited for because I just love anything related to Hogwarts and anything related to the different houses because you can see the banners in the Great Hall here. It's got Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, and Ravenclaw, all of their banners. And then this tower over here has a dragon on it as well, which is so cool. And for this project, there are three parts. It's the difficulty level of five lightning bolts and you need tape and scissors. So the first step is to make part one, which is the Great Hall, the back of it. So it seems like the Great Hall has two sections, a front and a back. It's a lot of folds, a lot of creases, same old, same old. And then there's a part two that says Great Hall front. And here we go with that. This has got 14 steps. Actually, this part had 26 steps. So yeah, that is pretty involved, pretty detailed project. And then we've got part three here, the Great Tower which also has a lot of creases duh and this is 20 steps all right this is a complex project but i think i'm really gonna look forward to working my way up to do this one because it looks pretty awesome all right so now we have textured pages and it's got like a scissor here to cut along this line all right it does appear that the pages are perforated so you can like kind of tear them out of the book and then work with the projects that way. They should have made this part perforated as well. Actually, that would have been easier since it seems like actually most of them are like squares. Yeah, they should have made that perforated as well. But anyway, I could still use scissors to do that. So this is supposed to be the sorting hat. So you get one of those, nothing on this side, the cauldron. And then it's got the green potion over here, the howler. Again, there's no words, so you have to write your own thing over here. Another howler, the Ministry Howler, purple, a cat <laughs> that looks hilarious, the way it's kind of like all spread out, okay, so that's a cat, and then we've got the Snowy Owl, I like the texture, the eyes are so far apart, but you know they're gonna be fine once you put them all together, and then there's Great Horned Owl as well, same thing, Golden Snitch, ooh, 
So you gotta discard some of this gray area. A lot of cutting involved in this one. Then the dragon, the Norwegian Ridgeback. Seems to be smaller. Then the Chinese Fireball. Ooh. And then the Ukrainian Iron Belly. And the Firebolt Broomstick. I love this. I love the texture of the broom. Like the way they printed it on. That looks fantastic. Okay. Oh, and there's like more on the back. Because it's kind of going to be 3D, right? So that's cool. And then we've got the Chocolate Frog here. The frog. Yes. Brown on both sides. I was hoping they would do that. Because that would make sense. And then we've got a Chocolate Frog box. The top. How cool is this? And then the chocolate frog's bottom. And the unicorn, which I think is just plain white. Yeah, I think so. And then we've got a hippogriff. Ooh, look at that. And then Fox the Phoenix. Ooh, this is so pretty. I love the colors on this. And look, oh wait, the hippogriff does have parts on the back as well. Fox is so pretty though. And more! Okay, and then Fluffy, the heads. Three parts to the heads. Oh yeah, there I see three heads. And then, okay, there's more on the back. And then Fluffy's body. And then we've got Stag Patronus right there. Which is also in white. And then Hogwarts, the Great Hall, the back part of it. Seems like a very tiny portion of it. Of that page that's used for the design it's gonna end up looking quite small and here we go this is the hogwarts great hall front all right and then we've got hogwarts great tower and that's got the whole it takes up pretty much the whole square area and then we've got the dragon there so that is it so i'll be honest guys the thought of ripping out these pages at the back and folding them up is kind of freaking me out a bit because i don't normally tend to do that with my books but since this is an origami book it does make sense to do that so i just kind of got to get with it i am going to start with the sorting hat project first so i kind of messed up already because as i was tearing out this page from the book along the perforated edge it was really snug so it was a little difficult to do so and i kind of made some rips along it but anyway, I'm still going to move on and try to see what I can do with this piece of paper and see if the project still works, even with the rips. So here is the finished hat and I think it turned out really great actually. I like the way the pleats are on the edges and the back is also pretty fine. It seems alright. It doesn't seem like it made a big difference that the rips were there because they're kind of hidden on the inside of the hat over there. So this is great. And I found that using a ruler, cutting board, and pen knife instead of a pair of scissors to cut the straight edges was a lot easier to work with. So next up, I'm going to make a howler and I've got the paper all cut up and ready to go. So here is the completed howler and I'll be honest I had a little trouble with the inside reverse fold on the bottom because I wasn't sure exactly how to fold that in regards to this project but I think I figured it out in the end and I'm quite pleased with how this turned out. And that is it. This was a close look at the Harry Potter origami book. I will probably be completing the remaining projects over time at my leisure, but I had a fun time getting started with them. So let me know in the comments below what you thought of the Harry Potter origami book. 
And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and please subscribe to my channel Geek Glitz for more things geek and more things glitz as I make videos every Friday. I've got some more collection videos coming up such as my Danielle Nicole Harry Potter collection, a couple of DIY videos, some Wizards Unite videos and more hauls. So make sure to hit that notification bell to be informed when my new videos are up. And feel free to connect with me on all of my other social media, which I've listed below in the description. I've got a Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So come say hello, as I love to hear from you. Thank you for watching, lovelies. See you in the next video. Bye!